Oh, hey, man. You want to check something out? It's another roguelite. Roguelike. I don't know the difference between the two. Get off my back, okay? But guess what? It's another one of those. And it's, uh, you know, I say Brotato, Brotato, Vampire Survivor, Clone Auto. It doesn't matter what you call it. It is what it is. It looks like Cyanide and Happiness. Happiness and Cyanide. Whatever you call that. You know what I mean. That cute little art style. Check it out. Anyway, it's called Soul Stalker. Notice how they didn't put the word survivor or survivors anywhere in there. A plus from me for that one. This is brand new. Just popped on the freaking PS5 store on a Thursday out of nowhere. And uh, since I've been on this kick and it is the clean, cute little art style that I just fucking love. I thought, you know what? Let's give it a shot because all the other games I've been playing that are of this type don't really follow that like map structure where you enemy store enemy harder enemy boss you know like that whole structure i don't really play those but i watch some youtubers who do play those and i've been kind of like oh that looks cool but they're usually on the pc and i'm over here on the console like some kind of modern day well redacted and anyway uh i don't get the opportunity to play too many of those cool games that look like a ton of fun um in this case i do get to play it and it's called soul stalker it's very very simple and it's very new and guess what so far it runs really smooth and it's really fun and i'm gonna go ahead and cut to the action well howdy stranger you're a fresh face around these parts ain't you well, I'll be darned. Thing is, you're a soul stalker, a butcher of souls. That means you go on missions to wrangle them apparitions, making this here world a tad safer for ghosts like me. Now, if you're fixing to know how one gets on them missions, well... This here's the Journey Globe. I uh, just interact with it to head out on missions and extinguish some foul souls. Also, this table with the candles is crucial if you want to succeed. Some folks mighty fancy calling it the character selection screen, whatever that means in these parts. And if you're looking to fancy up your gear even more, you best mosey on over to this post to pick your weapon. And yup. You can do the same with trinkets, which are basically them items with passive bonuses, you know? And, uh, reckon you're probably pondering what your aim is in this here world might be? Well, for the time being, you can aim to crack open that gate. Go on ahead, interact with it, and let's see what quest you gotta tackle to pry it open. Some of them gate quests might tie into the job board where you'll find them shorter random special scenarios that them longer journeys. Blah, blah, blah. Oh man, to put it plain and simple, them shorter runs on the job board are to get you warmed up to your role. Though, you should know that triumphant in them there don't let you climb them ascensions, got it? Got it? Anyways, reckon that's all you gotta know for now. If you ever need a refresher, just holler at me. I could not believe you guys just let me get away with that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Jeez. Anyway, so here it is. Cute little rogi. And uh, you got these ghosts. Uh, apparently that mushroom died. He's a mushroom ghost. But the rest of them seem to be more like people. Anyway, uh, you got the hub world here. You got the gate here. You got to do the quest to get the gate open. Uh, these, like the old man mentioned, old ghost, old mushroom. I don't know. Anyway, like was previously mentioned, aforementioned job board uh, has what he called special scenarios. But, you know, it's just like short runs instead of trying to last as long as you can. You're just going in, getting it done and getting out of there and by doing so 
you, uh, I guess, unlock pro progress on the hub world or the gate. I don't know what it leads to. We're going to have to find out, obviously. But this is an initial hands-on review type situation. So I don't need to be really good or really far into the game. I just need to let you know, hey, what is it? Is it worth it? Was it do? And I can tell you, what is it? Told you already. Rogi. Roguelike. Rogu roguish. I don't know what to call it. But, you know, you play. You die. You better equip yourself. You go in. You do better a little bit each time. And uh, you also pick up random weapons and power-ups and try to build a build that breaks the game. I mean, that's what I thought you tried to do anyway. In my experience, that's what I always do is I just start building and reading the descriptions of everything and what it does and then try to find out how things can synergize in a way that maybe the developers didn't anticipate. Or they did, they just didn't want to make it obvious. Either way, my goal is always to try to break the game by making a badass combination of things. And it looks like that's definitely possible in this one. Uh, as always, depending on your level of skill, staying alive and luck, getting the right roles to build what you need to build and learning along the way. And as long as everybody's having fun, that's all that matters, right? And I'm telling you, this one's great. I, 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 I might say that a lot. Um... I, I don't usually have too many negative things to say about games that I review. Uh, and when it comes to an indie game, I don't know where on the PlayStation Network that is pretty cheap and as well unheard of and basically a clone of popular game types. You never know what you're going to get. Typically, it's on the, uh, the shitty side. Let's be honest here. Typically, you're going to get a shitty game that had a really good thumbnail and looked like it could have been something else. Uh, that's not this one. I... Everything about it so far has been uh, above board, as they used to say back in the old boomer days. Uh, it's all above board, and I enjoyed playing it. I just streamed it for an hour straight, uh, which is how long it records a clip for as well. So I figured that's a good time to test out the game, stream it, and also get the footage for this. And here we are. And all I can say is I don't know entirely what I'm doing other than the typical, like I said, progress, earn, do better, go out again. But with this one, you also have the added like that gate quest, which whatever that does probably unlocks another area, which hopefully that just means more content. Uh, there's a ton of characters to unlock. There's a ton of weapons available and a ton of trinkets available. So it seems to be, even if it is an indie game and it's on the cheap side, they definitely seem to have stocked it well enough before they put it out to give you a decent amount of content. Uh, I can already tell, and I, I've been able to tell from watching other people play these games and how I just recently started buying a bunch of different uh, versions of them. I can already tell that like it's got it hits all the spots that you typically want from your rogies. So it's it's got that going for it. And then for me, like uh, to go back to like Vampire Survivors, that's the kind of game that uh, I could play forever. Except for the thing that 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 kind of pushed me back from it at first and took me so long to get to it was the art style. Like. Don't get me wrong, I grew up with that art style. You know, I've been gaming since the 80s. So that that's my OG art style. But at the same time, it's 2024. And like, part of me is like, I, you know, doesn't want the nostalgia sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this game could be really cool if it looked better. And this is an example of exactly that. Something that looks like it would be on Steam, looks like you would find your typical, uh, youtuber who plays steam games uh you would probably find them playing this uh, and as i mentioned i'm on the console i'm on ps5 so i only get to play what comes to the ps5 and when it comes to certain genres the ps5 is very lacking and well consoles in general are very lacking and some of the more uh niche pc games clicking games uh steam a lot of Steam games are, are clones of other games, but they are really extensive and they're really good. They just happen to be clones, you know? And so it doesn't happen very often that you get to find something like that on the PlayStation, especially on the PS5. And I'm gonna just go ahead and say, once again, this is 
one of those games and i absolutely love it and i don't remember how much it cost uh there's so many like like i said i've been kind of going crazy you know credit card go brrr, but uh the uh, not really because it almost everything was playstation sales I, again less than the price of a full brand new game what is that 70 bucks now so for like half the price of a brand new game i've got quite a few new games in my repertoire rep reptar and uh this is now one of them and i like this one way better than i like the other ones that some of the other ones i've played so uh this one will be more of a, a regular occurrence than the other ones uh once again no no uh apparent co-op it's very rare that you get co-op in these games which sucks because these are the kinds of games that me and my wife love to play like having two people both going through the frenetic chaos of enemies on the screen while both building up insane builds is really fun and i suggest that everybody who makes these kind of games add in a couch co-op option uh, Vampire Survivors has up to four players, and that is a freaking blast. So, uh, anytime you can add couch co op to a game, you should. Ever since the PlayStation 4 generation of games, it seems like the focus on couch co op has disappeared. Uh, Xbox 360 was the last console to really offer a couch co op paradise, like the arcade uh xbox live arcade had so 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 many arcade games that were co-op and couch based and just so fun and like playstation that was my biggest gripe when i moved over to it was playstation does not have a lot of couch co-op and the newer generations do not have a lot of couch co-op and it makes sense when you're playing a game that's like you know grand theft auto 5 yeah obviously that you can't run that twice but like most games, you should be able to run a couch co-op version of it. So just a little gripe in my review that has nothing to do with this game, just the genre in, in general. But uh, I so far am working on a bleed build and there is a it appears to be a way to do a exploding, bleeding, healing yourself build. And that's what I was kind of trying to build while I was streaming. Um, but that said, there are so many weapons I didn't even see yet and so many options I haven't seen yet that the combinations are no doubt ridiculous. Uh, however, I only dabbled in, like I said, within, a, I mean, in an hour I got, uh, well, I almost got the gate open. I didn't do the last one because the last mission for opening the gate is two stars, do a two star job. And all of my jobs were one star and I don't know how to get them other than maybe doing more and more. And I wanted to stop so I could do this. So there you go. Soul Stalker, a little indie gym hit out of nowhere on the PlayStation 5 and just literally dropped, I believe Thursday. I think it came out yesterday out of nowhere. I mean, the PlayStation Store used to have a release like schedule. I swear to God, for the longest time, Tuesdays were new game release days, and then like Fridays for like really big special games. And uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it changed and I didn't get the memo, but it seems like games just be popping up randomly. I check every Tuesday, I check every Wednesday. That seems to be the two days that games pop up the most. But, like, games just be popping up on that store sometimes, guys. So, I, I, I've been watching lately to see if some of these games I've been looking for pop up. And so, this was one that just magically showed up. And I was like, wait, what is this? And I checked it out. And it was exactly what I was looking for, which is one of these rogues with the, uh, with the, the map that you traverse down. And uh, I really like that kind of game style. So, if you like that kind of game style where you got to you know, work on a build, but you gotta, you know, deal with luck and skill, and then there's a little bit of strategy and tactics involved in, in how you progress through the map, and do you choose the harder enemy versus the weaker enemy? Is the reward gonna be worth it? Do I heal or do I upgrade my weapons? That sort of thing. And uh, it's just all around fun, and on top of that, it is a very smooth, very cute, 
3D, 2D. It's got a little bit of that Paper Mario slash... Um, just that style. Paper Mario, I guess, is the ones that really started that. But uh, it, it, it takes from that style, but then it also has that happiness and cyanide sort of art direction. And then the actual backgrounds and everything are really colorful and beautiful. The weapons are great. The power-ups are great. It seems like the synergy works really well, and everything about it was just fun. And at the end of the day, if I actually had fun, that's all that freaking matters. And this is one of those games that I was like, I don't know what we're going to get, and I ended up getting a good time. So hopefully if you like it, you'll check it out, and uh, you'll have a good time too. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, you're awesome. Uh, I'm okay. And uh, we'll see you out there next time. Love you guys. Bye. <clears throat> hey, uh, your mom wants you to subscribe if you could, please. Thank you.